It's not often that a PC case gets me aroused anymore. In fact, it's been over a year since I've been this excited to check out a PC case. We just don't see much innovation anymore. Until today. Introducing the Height Y70 Touch, a refreshed version of the Height Y60 dual chamber mid tower featuring an integrated 4K LCD touch. This right here is what separates this case from everything in the market. It's not just a regular monitor. It's a capacitive touchscreen that actually adds functionality to your setup. And I'll talk more about that later in this video, as well as a potential problem that I discovered while building in this case. So you just finished building a PC and you're greeted with this horrendous message on your screen. Well, fear not because I have an easy solution for you guys. Head on over to yourcdkey.com and pick up a Windows 11 or Windows 10 Pro CD key for around 15 bucks. Just put in the code TS20 to get that extra 20% off and afterwards they will email you the CD key and all you have to do is go into your activation settings on Windows and put it in. Afterwards, the watermark will disappear and you can enjoy all the features from Windows. But Ed, you can just buy an LCD monitor and mod the Y60. Why would anyone pay $360 for this? Well, you have a point. Except, you will need to buy this screen separately, which costs $150 if you go through Height themselves, or $117 if you go through eBay. But then, you have to install it yourself, route the cables yourself, and it's recommended to download an STI file and 3D print a mount to get this hooked up properly. And finally, once you have everything up and running, you would have to customize the screen yourself using widgets from Rainmeter or other apps. With the Height Y70 Touch, the screen is already integrated seamlessly with the case. You get a touchscreen display with a higher PPI, so it looks much nicer. And more importantly, you get access to Height Nexus an all-in-one app designed and optimized to work with the monitor, giving you tons of widgets and customizable options. It's also worth mentioning this is a larger case, a 70.7 liter case as opposed to 60 liters from the Height Y60, and this translates to more space inside. For example, you can now install up to a 360 millimeter radiator on the side, the rear now supports a 140 millimeter fan, and you get more clearance for the top for thicker radiators, in addition to just more room for your other components, allowing you to install even the most beefiest GPUs. The only thing they didn't bring over from the Y60 are the three pre-installed fans. So you no longer get the two intake fans in the bottom and the one intake fan in the back, which means you're gonna have to BYOF. Everything else is pretty much identical. You get the same pattern design as before, the same snap-off panels, two removable hard drive cages in the back, and the vent style grommets. I do like the addition of the cable tie downs on the bottom of the case. I think this will come in handy for the power supply cables. The bottom filter snaps off, allowing for easy cleaning and removing the bottom three thumb screws releases the bracket, allowing you to install up to two 140 millimeter fans as intake, which is highly recommended if you're going with this case. The case comes in four different flavors. The one I have here is the snow edition, which comes in this Arctic white color scheme. So be mindful on selecting your other components to make sure you're not mixing the whites. For example, this white AIO from Deepcool is more of a milky off-white. And as a result, it sticks out quite a bit compared to something like the Lee & Lee AIO that uses a snow white colorway. Installation is pretty straightforward, just like the Y60. I had to remove the PCI riser canopy to install the motherboard. Then I removed the top bracket to help me install the 360 AIO since I was going for exhaust on the top. The deep cool power supply goes in the back of the chamber with tons of space to hide the cables. Then it was time to hook up three more fans on the side just to occupy the empty space before finally popping in the graphics card. Finally, the build was done, but it was already late in the evening. So I decided to call it a day, go get some rest because the following day was gonna be an exciting one. Or so I thought. I stepped into the office and my heart immediately dropped as soon as I saw this. The touchscreen somehow managed to peel itself off the corner piece of the case and it was barely hanging on by dear life. But it gets worse. One of the connectors broke off due to the weight of the monitor and I caught it just in time before it completely ripped off. I soon discovered that the screen was attached to the bracket using only one piece of thin double-sided adhesive on the top and bottom. And over time, I guess it just peeled off due to the heat in the office. When I'm not in this office, the AC is turned off and this room gets pretty hot, guys, up to like 85 degrees Celsius, especially now in California. So if I had to guess, 
This case wasn't tested in warm environments, which is understandable. Like what sane person would even be in a room with 85 degrees Fahrenheit or 27 degrees Celsius? That's just not comfortable. So I don't think height is to blame here. There's also the possibility that this might be the only case that was sent out to the YouTubers that has this issue, and I'm just very unlucky. I mean, there's a lot of factors to consider, especially being an early sample. But I do want to read the response that Height gave me when I did bring this up to their attention. The early samples are partially hand-built, and that could be the reason why the tape didn't hold. All production versions will be mechanically pressed to mount the glass, so no one should experience this. Either way, I'm just glad that Height sent over a new monitor shortly after so that I can finish up the build. While gaming, the temp stayed relatively cool with the GPU peaking at 64 degrees Celsius and the CPU hit 66 Celsius for a brief second. These temps would be slightly cooler if I flipped the three side fans as intake, but I wanted to showcase how great the temps are even with the least optimal fan configuration. Okay, now let's talk about the screen because this is the main selling point of the Height Y70 Touch. I mean, it's called the Y70 Touch for a reason. I mean, sure, the case is a lot bigger than before. You got more clearance for bigger components, but make no mistake, the centerpiece is the 14.1 inch 4K display. I mean, technically it's 1100 by 3840. So while vertically it has four times more pixels than 1080p, horizontally it's much less. It does have a 60 Hz refresh rate, but what really separates this from the other DIY monitors is that it comes integrated in the case already. You don't have to do any of the heavy lifting by mounting, routing the cables and optimizing the software. Height makes it all easy with the Nexus Touch. Now, before we get into all the cool things you can do with the monitor, let's talk about the setup process. If you take a look in the back, you can see a display port on the bottom. This is connected directly to the monitor, and you will need to connect this with your graphics card using the provided short display port cable. There's also a USB 2 header cable that provides power to the monitor, and you will need to plug this directly to the USB header on your motherboard. All pretty standard stuff. It is a second monitor after all, so these are expected. On one end, it's nice that Height decided to use the USB header on the motherboard to supply power instead of the USB port in the back of the motherboard, which I think looks a lot nicer. But on the other end, it's using up one of the very few USB headers that you have available on your motherboard, which I'm sure most of us gamers can agree, sometimes it's just not enough. Most budget and mid-range boards only offer one or two at most, leaving us unable to connect some of our other components. Fan hubs, AIO pumps, and RGB accessories all use up a USB 2 header on the board. So if you plan on using two or more with this case, you're not gonna have any left for the monitor. But luckily they do sell USB splitters for cheap on Amazon. I'll drop a link to the same one I used with this build down below if anyone is interested in picking one up. Okay, back to the monitor. So after downloading and installing Nexus Touch, it will take you straight to the main menu. Over here, you can view a bunch of information at a glance. Best way to describe this screen is to compare it to an iPhone. You know when you're on your iPhone and then you swipe to the left from the home page? It's the same concept here. And when you swipe left on the actual monitor, it will take you to the same screen. So basically whatever you have here on the home page will reflect on the actual monitor. It's just an overview of some of the widgets that you can customize here on the home screen. And it's very limited right now because obviously we're still in beta. If you click here on add widget, you can kind of see that there aren't that many options available right now. The faces app is where it all goes down. This is what is going to unlock the full potential of the touch display. So we're gonna go over all the features one by one, buckle up and let's dive right in. So the media widget is pretty self-explanatory. This will show you a preview of your current media player and it'll give you access to some shortcuts like pausing, skipping and playing your music. Widget sizes are available in one by one, four by two and four by four, but not all widgets have access to these sizes, which you guys will see very soon. It's always recommended to pick the appropriate size to make sure that you have room for your other widgets on the same screen. So for example, Spotify, I don't need four by four size. It takes up way too much space without providing any additional info. The four by two is plenty enough because I still get to see the album cover and I get access to the shortcuts while giving me extra space for one more widget on the same screen. You also have the option of enabling audio reactive. So the player will kind of react to the music that's playing currently. Now there are a few ways you can interact with a touch display. The first most common way is by pressing and holding onto the widget on the actual touch screen. So if I press and hold on the media player, it will open up in full screen. There are a lot of widgets on here 
that don't really take advantage or add anything useful in the full screen mode, but there are a handful of widgets in here that do, and you guys will see what I'm talking about. And to exit this, you simply just swipe up from the bottom. Okay, the next widget is gonna be Twitch chat, which I think is gonna be very popular with this case, especially for people who stream a lot and people who watch streams a lot. It's only available in 4x4, which will make a lot of sense soon. Um, and if you wanna add this widget to the display, you have to first navigate to the screen you want to add to. So let's go and find an empty page. And then you simply just hit add. You can only edit a widget after you add it to the monitor. So after you hit add, it will take you to a second screen, which will give you more options on customizing. Now over here, we only have the option of entering a Twitch username. So I'm gonna put in my idle Pokimane, and then I'm gonna hit save. Immediately, it's going to update in real time and show me Pokimane's chat in real time. Unfortunately, she's not streaming right now, so let's go ahead and follow someone else right now. Let's do Summit 1G, is usually active. And there you go. We can see his current chat in real time. We can actually add another Twitch widget if you want. We can add as many as you want of the same widget as long as you have the space for it. So I'm going to go back here, add a different person. I think XQC is streaming right now. Wow, okay, yeah. That is moving pretty quickly. Another cool thing actually is if you hold and press the Twitch widget, it maximizes in full screen. Like, this is one of the apps that actually takes advantage of the full screen mode. Here's a perfect use case scenario for this. Let's say you're watching one of your favorite streamers. You can go ahead and max out the window, so full screen mode, and you can move the chat to the second monitor. That way it's not bothering you and you can just enjoy the person's content, right? And you can still have access to the chat if you wanna glance over and see what everyone is typing. Or picture this, you're a streamer, but you only have one monitor. What do you do? You move your chat to the second display so it doesn't interfere with your gaming and you can still have access to it if you wanna interact with your audience. So to exit this, we're just gonna swipe up and then we're back to the original screen. The gestures are very similar to a smartphone. You can even swipe down from the top and you have access to some quick control. So you can adjust the brightness of the screen, uh, the microphones in the middle. I don't have a microphone currently hooked up, but this is where you can adjust the microphone volume. And then you got the system volume over here, along with some shortcuts on the bottom. You can disconnect from Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, airplane mode. I mean, pretty self-explanatory. Oh, and to delete a widget, you just gotta hover over and hit the trash can on any one of them. Very simple. Now, OBS, I think, is going to be another very popular widget with this case. With the OBS widget, you have direct access to some of the shortcuts that you probably use often when you're streaming. You got your start and end stream, start and end recording, as well as access to your scenes. Now, I added five scenes from OBS. I'm not sure exactly how many you can fit on here. Let's go up to 10, just to see. Nine and 10. I'd be surprised if it actually supports up to 10. Oh, why? Wow, it goes up to 10. Okay. You can fit in a lot of scenes, apparently. Very nice. This is one of the widgets that you can do full screen, but you can scroll and pick whichever scene you want, which is cool. Recording, stop recording, very nice, okay. This is only available in four by two, by the way. There are some other pretty cool widgets on here, like the block game, which is basically like Tetris. Uh, I'm not exactly sure how useful this is, but I guess if you're looking to kill some time while you're in the lobby waiting for the next game, you got something to play with. Okay, the shortcut widget is actually very useful as well. You can add a shortcut to virtually any app that's installed on your PC. If we go back to the main screen, as you can see, I do have four shortcuts on the bottom of the screen. I got Google Chrome, OBS, Cyberpunk, and Spotify. This can be very handy if you're trying to declutter your desktop wallpaper or get rid of some of the icons from your taskbar. So for example, I do have a shortcut to Spotify already on the monitor, so I can remove it from my taskbar. In fact, I have a full screen dedicated to just shortcuts on here. So I can technically remove all the shortcuts on my taskbar and my desktop for a super clean, minimal look. The calculator is actually a pretty useful widget as well. You can kind of crunch some numbers on here and determine if you have enough money left over to pay this month's rent. But I do want to also point out how touch sensitive and accurate this display is. Like so far it hasn't lagged or given me any problems whatsoever. Like everything is so fluid. Look at this. Even though it's the beta, I haven't run into any issues with it, which is very impressive. Okay, Gallery is my absolutely favorite widget out of all of them. I'm obsessed with this widget. You can add any photo, video, or even GIF, I believe, 
two to display. You can even do a combination of them, like in a montage, which is really nice. The current sizes that it supports is one by one, four by two, and four by four. As you can see in the main screen, I do have a montage of my wife and I kind of cycling through four or five photos. Uh, on the third page, I have two montage photos of both my daughters, and then I have a video montage on the bottom of both my daughters as well. The only thing I noticed is that it doesn't give you the option of positioning or cropping the photo. So for example, four by two, let's go ahead and add this, select the file, I'll show you what I'm talking about. Upload a picture of both my daughters. Unfortunately, you can see that Shayla's head is cut off. So it doesn't give you the option of kind of adjusting it. So you're gonna have to crop it yourself before you upload it in the appropriate aspect ratio. So if I wanna add a collection or a montage of photos, all I gotta do is add, and it'll bring me to this page. We can go ahead and select a singular photo, or if you wanna do a playlist, we just set the playlist option, and then we can select a folder. So I do have one with Shayla, for example, all the um, photos are in here, so I'm just gonna hit upload, and there we have all four of our photos. We can also change the frequency underneath change media. You can do every five seconds, 30 seconds, minute. Uh, we only, oh, we have actually have more options down here. I didn't even know this. Every day, every hour. I don't know anybody would use those. I think every five seconds or every 30 seconds is gonna be the most popular option. So after that, we just back out and there you go. It updates in real time. And the quality is amazing because it's a 4K screen. So it retains the original quality of the video and photos, which is awesome. This really does just completely transform the way you interact with your PC. I can see this being very popular with parents, for example, who like to always keep a photo of their kids on their desk. This is gonna take that to the next level. There's nothing that brings more joy in this world than having kids. And the fact that you can have a live montage of them right next to you is just, it's amazing. Think of the times where you're stressed out or feeling down and all you gotta do is swipe a few pages and look at photos and videos of your little ones. Like that will absolutely just melt the stress right off of you. I love this feature so much. There's some other very useful widgets on here like uh, weather, which is on my main page. We got screen time, which isn't that useful. It just kind of tells you the total screen time of the monitor for that day. And then you got clock, which is available in both four by two and then four by four, which doesn't really add much as you can see here. So four by two is probably the best bet. After hitting add, there is a few designs that you can choose from. So you can do like the digital, you can do the, um, the standard, and then you got the, the flip style. I don't know what the term is for this one. And you can also change the time format from 12 to 24 hour, which is pretty cool. And then ladies and gents, we have the emoji keyboard widget, which is probably the most useless thing on here. I mean, it's fun. It's a really cool way to interact. You basically scroll through here and you pick whatever widget you want and you press on it and it copies it to the clipboard. So then you can come back on here and just paste it. That takes a lot of time. Honestly, it's a lot easier to just hold the Windows button on your keyboard and hit period. That will bring up the shortcuts on here already. You can even search for the widget, which will save a lot more time. So again, that's cool, it's fun, but it's absolutely pointless. Lighting doesn't really do anything unless I don't know exactly how to use it. Just clicking on this changes the color of the background of the actual widget, but nothing else happened. So I'm not sure if you can integrate this with something somehow. Maybe that feature will be available in the full version. I do wanna talk about URL. This one is very useful. It's basically adding a shortcut to a specific website, kind of like a bookmark on your web browser. You click on add and you could put in any website I'm gonna type in our mousepad website, dealsource.tech slash store. It's even going to copy the logo of that website if there is one available, so it's easier to find. So there you have it, it's on the screen. Once I tap on it, it's gonna take me directly to the website. It's, this can be very useful, especially if you have multiple uh, shortcuts saved. And finally, we got the performance widget, which is going to be the most used widget because this will transform your monitor into a custom sensor panel. Only this time, you have complete control over how you wanna customize it. So the widget is available in four x two and four x four, just depends on how much information you want displayed and how much space you wanna use up. So we're gonna go with the four x four option 
and we're gonna click add. And on this page, you can select from four main components. So you got CPU, GPU, memory, storage, and you get the option of tracking any metric you want for each category. So for CPU, you got load, clock speed, temp, voltage, power. GPU, you got pretty much everything except uh, voltage. Memory is only usage. And then for storage, you get only temp and usage. But the cool thing about this is that you actually have the option of selecting from six different designs. So for example, in the first box, let's say I wanna track my CPU's load percentage. I'm gonna click on the box itself, click on CPU, and then we'll keep it on load. Now for the design, I like the Caterpillar design. So I'll go with that option. And then moving on to the second box, let's track the GPU clock speed just to change it up. We'll keep it the same design just so it's cohesive. So we'll stick with Caterpillar. And then moving on to the bottom, let's do memory usage. But let's change this one up. Let's do, I don't know, Radiate for example. And then for the last box, we can do storage and we don't need to do temps. Let's do usage for example. But let's also do Radiate just so it's more consistent. And there you have it. Just finished my sensor panel on the monitor. I don't know if they're gonna be adding more features or more designs to choose from. I think it'll be awesome if they do, but um, we're just gonna have to wait and see. There's also some options on the bottom here that you can do. This is mostly for read-only text. So let's say if you wanna do, I don't know, CPU voltage for this one. The middle one, we can do GPU power. And then the third one, we can do, I don't know, clock speed, I guess. Now, if you touch and hold the sensor panel on the monitor, it goes into full screen mode. And if you wanna customize that, you click on the arrow on the software and you have access to even more areas of the sensor panel. So on the bottom here, you can add like, I don't know, CPU voltage. There aren't that many options to choose from right now. Like I said, if they do add more tracking options, it'll be cool. But again, the point I'm trying to make here is it's a lot easier to make a sensor panel instead of downloading IDA64 like we used to in the past and then custom making our own from scratch. So that's cool. Now there is one feature I would love to see on faces and we do not have access to it right now in the beta. So if uh, Hyde is watching this video and they're listening, please give us an option to move or relocate our widgets. We don't have that option right now. The only thing we can do is edit or delete. So let's say I wanna move the performance widget to the top. The only way to do that is by deleting the other widgets and then having that move up automatically. And then you have to go back and basically re-add those widgets that got deleted. Obviously, I know this is just the beta, so maybe that feature will happen on the full version. And finally, let's talk about personalize, which I also think is gonna be very popular with this case. People love to customize, people love to match color schemes, so you can do that with the screen. So if you go and click on theme, it will take you to this screen where you can select from a variety of wallpapers, or video wallpapers, I guess. So the first one is kind of like a black and white topo, we got this kind of um, retro tunnel with RGB lights. We got space, underwater with some fish. I don't know what this is, kind of like a hippie flower, I think. I think Hyde should definitely replace this one with a higher resolution because this one doesn't look that great. And then we got liquid metal or liquid something. This is my second favorite video wallpaper. Looks pretty cool. This is currently my favorite, the vortex tunnel, hyperspace, whatever you want to call it. And then we got two uh, wallpapers for the white theme PCs. So I think this one looks really nice with the snow case. And then last but not least, we got a pretty cool transformer looking one. And if none of this floats your boat, you can upload your very own custom media. So we're gonna click on pick a file. Uh, I don't have a video wallpaper on hand, so I'm just gonna pick on something that I already have saved. And there you go. You have complete freedom on whatever video you wanna upload as a background. It could be video or photo, actually. You can also select from some gradients down here. So if video wallpaper isn't your cup of tea, you can pick from some pretty interesting gradient options on here. But you can also take it a step further. That's right, guys, we're not done yet. You can customize the colorways for your accents and the text and stuff, okay? So down here, we can change the primary color to whatever you want. So let's do, let's do retro synth wave, why not? So primary color, yeah, let's do pink. Accent color, let's do like a teal. And then text, I always like to go with white so it's easier to read. So if we go back to Twitch, there it is. You can also adjust the transparency. You can go completely solid, which I do not recommend, 
or you can go very opaque, almost transparent, 10% opaque. And you can do this with any of the media as well. So you can pick any one of these wallpapers up here, scroll down and customize it to whatever you want. So if you have a very specific color scheme in your build, you can adjust the colors so that matches your color scheme. Let's not forget, this is still technically a second monitor. So you can use it as a second monitor. So let's say I'm in a game or I don't know, I'm working and I need the second display for notes or reference material. Well, you can do that. I'm gonna grab the script for this entire video and move it over to the screen. And there you have it. Now I have notes or reference material while I'm filming this video. And because it's Windows 11, I can actually split this into three different windows. There's one. Let's do Spotify and OBS on the bottom. And yeah, there you have it. I mean, it's awesome. I mean, there's so many things you can do with this extra monitor. Some people might call it a gimmick, but it adds so much functionality to your setup. It's awesome. Okay, let's say you're a content creator and you gotta shoot some awesome video for your Instagram reel or maybe your TikTok and you wanna get rid of all of these icons and stuff, right? And you wanna put a really cool video wallpaper in the background. Well, you can, you can go into settings and just disable the show Nexus touch. This will unload the app from the monitor and you have access to your wallpaper. And with that out of the way, you can open up Wallpaper Engine and add some pretty sick video wallpaper on the second monitor. Obviously, this is just for aesthetics. So like I said earlier, if you're gonna be shooting content and stuff and you wanna match a certain aesthetic or a color scheme inside your PC, this is probably the only reason why you would disable Nexus touch. So it doesn't look like um, Hyde is working on bringing some other very useful widgets on board very soon. So we got notes coming, audio visualizer, Google Calendar, and I believe reminders are also coming. So I'm very excited to see how they're going to integrate that with the monitor. I do have to admit that some of the widgets were a gimmick, like the emoji one, for example. But most of the other ones are actually very useful, especially if you only have a single monitor. The second screen just adds a ton of functionality with unlimited customization. And this is only the beginning. I would imagine Height would continue to bring us updates and add new widgets over time. $360 is a lot of money, I'm not gonna lie, guys. But considering that this is the only case in the world currently that can do this and offer this level of customization in a user-friendly integrated app, I think the price is justified. I'll drop a link to the case down below if you guys wanna get your hands on one. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you very soon in the next one.